So at this point we have um, created this uh, project that lets us add these pieces of data uh, into our database, publisher, year, all of that. Let's get a little bit multimedia into it by using uh, some of the hardware of a, de of a device. Now this is going to work best if we run it on a real device. The simulator won't be that impressive, so on a real device, because we've got a camera on a real device. If we're trying to run this on a simulator, you need to have a web camera. So say hello to everyone right there. We need to have a web camera in order for this to work so that it can simulate taking a photo. So I still have a couple of tablets there if you didn't get one. But we're going to uh, tap into the camera feature in two ways. One is to scan the barcode of a comic or any product, and the other is to take a photo a photo of the product. Now, if you did borrow a tablet, on the edge of your box of the tablet, there are barcodes there. So we have barcodes to play with. And there's also a barcode right on your computer at that yellow label there. So we have barcodes that we could use. You see on the edge of your of your box, or if you borrow your neighbor's box, there's a bunch of barcodes there. So we can use all of these as our uh, as our way to see does this work. So we have to do several things. For any of this barcode scanning or photo scanning to work, we need the appropriate plugin, the Cordova plugin that will let us write JavaScript to interface with the native code of the device to take a photo. There's this plugin that will access the camera and then process these little bars and it will it'll work on QR codes, it'll work on barcodes here and then the variety of barcodes. What you do with the data, again, I'm showing us these are the pieces of how we can make an app. You have to decide is a barcode scanner relevant in my app or not? Is the vibration, is the contacts, all of that, is that relevant to my app? So in order for us to first be able to have the capability to scan barcodes, we need to go back to our config XML file and add a new plugin. So from your Solution Explorer here, let's double click config XML. Go over to your plugins screen. So if you browse around here, there is no built-in core, unless I didn't see it here, but there is no built-in core barcode scanner, because a, a lot of people don't need that. But a lot of people do need the regular camera, or they need to check battery, or what else, uh, file transfer geolocation. So here's a bunch of common, um, common plugins for common tasks. Ours is a little uncommon, so we have to go to Custom. We need to provide the plugin ID out of the thousands of plugins out there that exist of someone that developed it to then add it. Well, let's go look at an example of one of the popular barcode scanners <coughs> online. Go to your web browser and let's do a search for Cordova Phone Gap or Cordova Barcode Scanner. Cordova barcode scanner. Just do a search for that. You'll get, you know, you'll get a couple of results. And we probably want the first one here. This is the one I want to go with. Um, you should see one that says github.com slash phone gap slash phone gap dash plugin dash barcode scanner. Any other one there might work, but this is the one that I've used before and I understand how this one works, and the other ones might be similar. You can have fun playing with the other scanners. So this is the result I want. GitHub, click on that. This again will take us to a page of documentation. So exactly what this does, any bugs, and all the documentation is at that GitHub link. So we have a purpose, we have a task ahead of us and if we wanted to use this plugin for extra things beyond what we'll talk about well we just look it up in the documentation and we'll figure out how to make it work 
So that'll go over to GitHub uh, Phone Gap. And you should see all of this stuff. Basically, what we need is the ID Phone Gap dash plugin dash barcode scanner. I could have told you that right away, but I wanted you to go to the original documentation for you to further, you know, read up on it and explore and figure out the plugin if it's useful to you. So that's what we're going to plug into that custom custom plugin in the config XML. I'm going to copy and paste that in Visual Studio or just type it click the arrow. It'll search and confirm that it's what we expect and then on the right you can select install. Now I've said before, and I'll go into it a little deeper a little later, we've talked about Cordova over and over, aka phone gap. So sometimes you see stuff online that has documentation or examples or plugins of phone gap. Uh, so they should be pretty synonymous. Uh, there are variations, which we'll talk about later. Phone gap dash plugin dash barcode scanner. Add. While it's adding, I'll look at the doc here a little bit. It works on all devices, basically Android and iOS. Uh, look at all the different kinds of barcodes there exist. You might have just thought there were like two or three. There's all of these ones. There's QR code, which is like that that square one that is common nowadays. There's some other ones here, UPCA and Code 93 and etc. Um, if you do look at the if you do have the device uh, box, there is a one barcode here that does say UPC. So there's UPC A and E. Um, we can use our plugin to scan the code, and it will tell us which barcode type is it, and then it'll tell us the data encoded. Some of it will just have numbers, but some of it will have more complex stuff, like actual words and sentences and even URLs links and other stuff like a QR code that often is embedded with a lot of information you know, even pictures and uh, business card info so basically there is an example here we're gonna do a variation of this we don't want to copy and paste this. this is too much but basically the way it works is Cordova dash plugins dash barcode scanner dash scan or dot scan We've got the barcode scanner object. We've got the scan method that has. Um, they have their syntax very different from Pouch, where we had one callback function with a failure, comma, success. This one, because it's developed by different people, their syntax is we try to do dot scan. And then there will be a callback function only dealing with success, comma, a callback function only dealing with error. It's not like Pouch where we get back both, or we could get back both the error or success, the failure or success in one callback. Further, comma, we have optional options over here where we can pass in, in JavaScript notation here, we can pass in a, um, a key and a value, such as prefer front camera, true or false. So on a device, we've got, uh, we've got the front camera, the selfie camera. We've got the back camera. So right here, it's saying, basically, automatically start up with the selfie camera. What, do I have a, do I have a barcode on my forehead? Mm -hmm. I don't know why they have that as true. Show flip camera button, true. In iOS and Android, when we try to scan, there will be a button that says flip between the cameras, yes or no, true or false. All of these are optional. These can be edited. And here it's saying only look for QR codes or PDF 417. So all of that is, is an example. We can prompt the user below. It'll say place a barcode inside the scan area. And again, to really see this result, you need to do it on a real device. 
So this can even encode barcodes. It can it can create barcodes, and then quirks in different uh, quirks in different uh, devices. So anyway, by now this should have installed. I've got the barcode scanner plugin. Step one. Step two, we need to create something on screen for the user to click on to interact with to start the barcode scanner. Step three, after that, we capture the data. Step four, we save the data. So we've got, um, we've got to first go over to our index HTML. We've got to make something on screen for the user. We'll go find our, our PG Save Comics screen to add a new feature. PG Save Comic. Inside a PG Save Comic, it's at about line 151. We've got our form, save comic, our field set of required items, and our field set of optional. Scanning the barcode will be optional. So we've got input of publisher and notes. Let's add after the notes. Let's create an HR here, a horizontal rule. I'm going to separate this visually from the previous fields. Create a new input. I'm not going to add a label at the moment. Input type text. Placeholder barcode. ID in barcode. So we're going to press the button. We'll create a button in a moment. We're going to press the button to start the camera to scan the barcode. The person will see the barcode uh, that was scanned on screen. They can then rescan it or change it if they want. So there's going to be an input field that will hold the data of the barcode scan. To start the scan, we need a button. So we've got a button to reset, a button to save. Here's a different button to scan a barcode. So underneath this input field, uh, we're going to have another input, this time of type button, so a generic button, value, which is the text that appears on screen, Let's say scan barcode, and then ID, btn save barcode. So this button will initiate uh, a function, will invoke a function to start the whole scanning of the barcode. It has an ID, so that means we're going to need to create a, uh, an object in JavaScript, and then an event listener for it, and then uh, the function to start scanning. That's how this looks. So a little visual separation, horizontal rule, input field to hold the barcode after we scan, and then the button to start the scan. If we're going to scan this data and put it into the database, we're also going to need to uh, edit our original a comic uh, variable. Remember, a comic is the whole bundle of all of this information. 
Well, when we set this up a few weeks ago, we never had a barcode field. So we're going to need to add one more field to our uh, comic variable to now accommodate this new piece of data. Let's do that, and then we'll do the whole create the button object, and then the event listener, and the function. We, we don't want to forget that one, definitely. We don't want to forget to create a field in our bundle of data to save it to the database. Let's go find where we've defined a comic. Let's see. So back on the index, JS. comes from prep comic which can, okay temp comic actually temp comic at about line 252 so our um, prep comic function gathers all the data returns it so that then we use it as a comic a little later so we've got an ID field a title field number field year field <coughs> publisher notes unique well, now we need a new field for this barcode. Line 259, in my case, is the final field, unique ID. Well, we need a new field. So at the end of that line, don't forget this comma, because we're adding a brand new key and value pair. Next line. Make sure you've got that comma. I know people are going to zone out and not put that comma. Put that comma, and then the next item. Quotes barcode colon the uh, that that field which we haven't made an object for it yet but it'll be eventually val in barcode and that's it we've got a brand new field we don't have the val set up yet we're getting to that it's either or either do this part first and then come back to add it into the into the JSON data or add it first and then set up the rest. So to reiterate unique ID, make sure you add a comma at the end. We've got a brand new item. Barcode, val in barcode. Well val in barcode comes from us trying to Save the data. We've got a little bit higher up in the same sort of area, function prep comic. We're saying let's get the value of the title box number box, etc. We've got a new box. So at the end of that line, 220, comma, val in barcode is equal to jQuery selector pound in barcode dot val. Give me the value of the barcode input field. which at the moment, of course, is nothing because we haven't started our whole barcode scanning function. Okay, so that assumes there's something in the box, in that input field that we've scanned. There's nothing there yet. But this is now uh, set up to 
uh, have that object, or the value in that object, the value in that input field as this object, and then we put it into temp comic, which eventually we pass it over to a comic. Well, that starts, that needs to start us off in uh, pressing the button to start the scan. So we'll go back to where we've got all of our definitions of our jQuery objects. Add a new object. Um, BTN uh, scan barcode. BTN save barcode. So let's see. We've got it right over here, a little bit higher up. Line 196. Here's where we've got all of our buttons, delete comic, edit comic, blah blah, new one, var, dollar, l, btn, scan barcode is equal to the ID of the button in the form. Pound BTN save barcode. So like we've done several times before, we have some HTML node that we are selecting. We've got then the jQuery based object representing it. We then need the uh, on click that we've done before to run a function, function save barcode, which starts the whole scanning of the barcode. So let's go back to where we've got our event listeners. We'll add a brand new one lbtn scan barcode dot on click to run the very creatively named function function scan barcode and then we will um, define that so these objects are all in this area so I can find them near the beginning of my pouch code and therefore my events listeners are all near the end where I've made all of these on clicks. We need a new one. L BTN save or scan barcode. Save barcode, scan barcode, whatever you call it. On click. Invoke function scan barcode which we then need to define that function. So we'll back up a little bit higher, higher than this block, this area, and we will define our function scan barcode. Let's see. So after end form edit comic info. A good place there. Function fn scan barcode. This is the end of our function scan barcode function. Since this barcode scanner plugin is not built into config XML, 
it might be a good idea to add a note here about where you got that plugin. So you can go back to the documentation. So if you still have your web browser open, and you still have that link to that GitHub page, I'm going to copy and paste that into my notes right here. Uh, just to remind myself, barcode, you know, third party barcode scanner for Cordova slash phone gap. You can find it again if you do a search, but if you've got it here in your in your actual code, um, you'll be able, you'll be able to get back to it faster. And as usual, you can give yourself a little console output to say s running barcode function just to confirm that your button is working. And then after that, we'll make it work for real. Yes. So is that? Function scan barcode, is that based on what we put as the ID in the HTML, or is that something different? This always happens to me, and I forget what I call these things right away. Yes, I called some of them, I called one of it save barcode, and yes. I'm calling it, save. it can be called kitty cat. It can be called okay. anything you want. But okay, so that one, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be the same as the HTML no. ID. No, because we're defining it here, whatever we want okay. here, because then we're, we're invoking it down here. But yeah, I should be careful and be a little more consistent. But yeah, keep them all exactly the same, and that way it is consistent. The same ID, the same function name. That's what I was thinking of doing, but I lost track and I called one scan and one save. Okay. All right, so you can try saving it, saving it and running it. You should at the very least now see some uh, see that output. Uh, this confirms that your ID in the HTML is the same as the ID that you reference in the JavaScript to create the object, and then that runs the function that you expect. So confirm that that works, and then we will then we will actually make it scan. Let's see, mine uh, loaded up here. Save comic. We've got that barcode field that'll be populated in a moment. Uh, obviously, I can type whatever I want here, but this will be populated by the real barcode in a moment. Uh, I do scan barcode, and my console there says scan barcode function is running. Okay, so we saw the documentation. That ultimately, ultimately, it's dot scan. That's the method of the barcode scanner 
object. So inside of the function Cordova dot plugins dot barcode scanner capital S on scanner dot scan method. inside of our barcode function this is ultimately the command that starts the barcode scanning feature of a device We saw in the documentation, however, that we then need to provide the success callback, comma, the failure callback, comma, and then options. So that's what we need to add at this point. I'm going to break apart those parentheses and say and.scan. So I'm providing three arguments here, uh, success, failure, and options. This is very different syntax than pouch because it's a different team. It's a different project. So don't assume that it's always the same of what we learned in pouch. Well, in pouch, it was very consistent over and over, failure, comma, success. This is something else. So we need to read how it works and then follow their syntax. So basically, we're going to have here function success curly brackets, comma, function failure, curly brackets, comma, and then curly brackets again, no final comma. If we're going to write any comments here, I would write the comment above or below dot scan. I, I would not feel comfortable putting it between each of these arguments. Sometimes it acts weird. So if you wanted to make a note, I would make it above and say uh, syntax. Success callback function comma failure callback and then options. That's what we're seeing here. Because then we're going to further break these curly braces. What do we do with success? Break that. What do we do with failure? We'll do options first. Our options, we have those various examples in the documentation. We're going to change a few of these. We will say the prompt. What is the text that will appear on screen to the user? We'll say place. We'll say place the comics barcode inside the scan area. We have other things to display here. So inside of these curly braces, I'm going to break these curly braces apart. And um, again, I, I won't add the comment here because I, I don't quite trust that. But what we've got here is um, prompt place comic in the scan area. This is the text that will appear when we get into the barcode scanner, telling the person to place the comic, the comics barcode in the scan area. If we don't specify that, they might think about putting the whole comic in the box. We want the we want them to get close to the barcode. Next option, so there's a comma there. 
we've got a uh, an option called result display duration this is how long do you want to show the barcode that was just scanned before taking us back to our app so uh, quotes result display capital D duration capital D again colon this is a numeric value milliseconds say one second show what we just scanned for one second before putting it back into our app because we sort of leave our app for a moment to go to the camera we're done with it and we go back to our app and of course any sort of fraction here uh, you know even a quarter of a second or longer orientation I want uh, I want to scan the barcode landscape. Our app is, is stuck on portrait, yes, but when we switch over to scan the barcode, I'd like to be landscape because most of these barcodes are wide, aren't they? So I want my camera to be able to fill it in completely when I scan. So orientation colon landscape. And the last one I'll do here, disable success beep. Uh, we'll say false. The default is that it will scan the barcode and not play a little beep. We have the option to scan the barcode, it beeps to show it. It's scanned, just like we're at the we're at the store at the checkout stand and we're getting scanned our groceries and such and it beeps every time we scan that's what that does that can be disabled of course if it gets noisy or annoying and the syntax disable success beep capital S capital B and there's a bunch of other options back on the doc documentation that we're not adding we'll just add these for example only look for certain barcodes only look for QR codes so we add the appropriate um, option to only uh, only recognize QR codes. Here this can recognize any kind of QR code or any kind of barcode. We'll back up for failure. This one's going to be easy. Uh, we are just going to do a quick alert pop-up box to the user to tell them there was some sort of some sort of error. Um, you can break that one apart. say alert scanning failed and then what was the failure For success, what we want that to do is, okay, we, we tried to scan a barcode, we were successful. It's got, it's got data in memory at the moment in the success object. Well, part of that data is the barcode value. I want to put that barcode value into our input field that's waiting for us when we're trying to save a comic. So I'll break apart function, and we will say the barcode input box uh, in barcode right in barcode uh, dot val val can read or write a value into a field but what we're writing is success dot text there's a built-in property, according to the documentation, that is text. That's the text that we extracted out of the barcode, 
out of all of those lines and stuff. So let's write that text into our barcode, but not val in. Val in is the value. Sorry, it's the, the name of the input field in barcode. Let's see, do we create an object for that? In barcode, no. OK, well, we'll just, just call it dynamically. OK, so little change here, sorry. Um, dollar, the jQuery selector, pound in barcode. We didn't create a, an object up on our list of all of our objects. We could do that. This will do it the same. Basically, in the input field, with that ID, set its value, which is the text that we successfully scanned. Interestingly, what you can also do, we'll do a little console output here, because what you can see is, if you're curious, you can say to yourself, type of barcode. And that'll be success dot format. All of these barcodes on my box look the same, but some of them are UPC8 and some of them are EIN5. E I don't know. So you'll, you'll, just for fun, for informational, you'll be able to see exactly what each kind of barcode this is. Well, the purpose, perhaps, of the real app is once you know what kind of barcode you're scanning, you can do other things with it. Um, Success.format can be used in a switch statement or an if-else to do something with it. So it's just going over to the console, but more importantly, we scan the barcode, it gets populated into the field, and then we, we, it takes us back to save the comic, and now we've got a barcode. So let's give that a shot. Go ahead and save and check your error list, just in case. And then um, run it on a real device, because the the virtual device will not really work that well. Yes? Can you get a device? Yes. Let me just run mine and I'll give you one one moment. So let me oops, let me run that on my real device and I'll give you a device. Yes. 
wait for that to come up and we'll see how it works. Now because we added a brand new plugin with brand new overhead, it mine's taking a little longer again to, to compile this time because I've got new stuff. Did anyone get to it and did anyone scan the barcode? Yeah. Okay. Great. Ten, ten points for the back row. So let me just confirm mine works and then and then we'll go on. You just sign in, yes. Oh, yes, because it's a yeah. new device that you do have to create. Yeah. So mine's taking a moment to uh, compile, but a few people have said it works, so I'll believe you, and it works. <laughs> 